for people that are going to be jumping on in here. We are about to be on the Within the Chaos radio show with Rodney Shortridge. So you guys can watch us on YouTube as well as Facebook Live. We'll see how that goes. Log Talk Radio. Alternative facts. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. At 12.07 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, numerous unidentified objects of unknown intent and unknown origin were detected at high altitudes over multiple locations of Earth's outer space by the National Radio Astronomy Observatory and these objects are presumed to be some form of controlled aircraft. It is not known if more of these aircraft will arrive or if they will attempt entering Earth's atmosphere. United States citizens are encouraged to monitor local media outlets as more updates will follow as information becomes available. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. The attacks by the undead have been reported in several states across the country. The dead are rising from their graves and are attacking the human race. At this time, it is expected that more attacks of this nature will occur in several other states in the next few hours. The intent behind the attack is unknown at this time. He has been observed that a bike for exchange of fluids is a method of transmission. This is an extremely dangerous situation as they prove the taste of human flesh. It is not known whether this event will last for hours, days, or even longer. Stay calm as authorities have been dispatched to deal with these creatures. An all-clear siren will be sounded when this situation is under control.
Welcome to Within the Chaos with your host, Rodney Shortridge, and co-host, Robin Dalton. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. You can listen in by going to blogtalkradio.com forward slash within the chaos or listen in by phone. You can dial 323-870-4197. And you can also call in to ask questions to our guests at the same number, 323-870-4197. From deep within the heart of the Appalachians, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you all for listening to Within the Chaos. My name is Rodney Shortridge and I'll be your host tonight, along with my fiery redhead co-host, Robin Dalton. Hey, y'all. Tonight, our special guests are paranormal investigators Gavin Kelly and Paula Purcell. Gavin is the host and lead investigator of America, uh, Amazon's new original series, The Paranormal Journey into the Unknown. Gavin is also a country artist and actor. Paula is a historical uh, paranormal investigator and works with the Girl Scouts as a scout leader service unit manager, cookie chair, and camp counselor during the summer. I'd like to say uh, our hearts go out to the families and uh, friends and the great people of Las Vegas, you know, due to this terrible act of pure evil that uh, injured and killed so many beautiful people. I just want Vegas to know that Virginia stands with you. I'd also like to give a shout out to my cousins up in Ohio, Jennifer and Joe Shortridge of 222 Paranormal. If you get a chance, check out their talk show and you can find them on Facebook under 222 Paranormal. I'd also like to give a big shout out to the Facebook Paranormal groups that allow us to post our shows on their pages and helping us get the word out about all of our great guests. Also a reminder that uh, we're having a, a Halloween costume themed photo shoot uh, located at Tractor Supply and Pound and Mill Saturday, October 28th starting at 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and also on Sunday the 29th, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, we'll have Wonder Woman there, so you can have your photos done with or without Wonder Woman, kids, family, dogs, pets, whatever, horses. Well, I don't know, we've never done a horse, but always the first time. So make sure y'all wear your, your spooky outfit and your costumes, come on out and have a good time with us. Uh, so Robin? How was your week? Robin? Well, shit. Okay, well, Robin keeps bumping in and out, so I, I, I tell you right now, she's having a bad week. <laughs> uh, uh, so I will go ahead and jump on ahead until she comes back on uh, and, and invite her guests. So, uh, again, it's my honor to welcome our guests, uh, Gavin and Kelly and Paula. Uh, for sale. Hello, Gavin and Paula, and thank you for joining us tonight. How are y'all doing? All right, we're doing good. How are you doing? We're doing pretty decent. Pretty decent? Uh, yeah. I'm hanging in. I'm decent? <laughs> That's what she decent. said. Pretty I've decent. I've say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's a new one on me. I know, right? Pretty I've never decent. heard that before. Pretty decent? Pretty decent. What does pretty decent mean? Yeah. Well, I'm not in pain and I'm alive. Okay, that'll work. I'll, I'll, I'll give her that. Okay, yeah. I'll give her that. Okay, I'll go with that, yeah. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? So, uh, oh, I'm tired. Oh, it's hard. Whew. I've been picking uh, pumpkins and gourds all day. Oh, wow. Whew. Okay. Okay. I can't say we've done that. Yeah, I raised I raise a garden. Ah. Uh, gotcha. I raised two big old gardens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it takes a lot to feed this big old boy, so I got to grow my own. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> oh man. Well, can, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? And I guess you know, as a, you know, here in the South, ladies go first. <laughs> hey, no problem. Take it away, Paula. Well, uh, I guess you kind of. I heard the introduction, but uh, there is one correction, and I have not fixed it on my bio. I have retired from Girl Scouts. I put in. Uh, as of officially 100% as of October 1st of this year I'm no longer part of I have re retired my hat with them I had been there with them for 15 years 
and wanted to go ahead and do better things in life plus my girls went off to college and and I just you know my girls that I worked with went all off went off to college so I didn't feel like starting a whole new troop starting in kindergarten going through this for another 12 years so I said it was my time to hang up the hat and pass it on to somebody else but uh, I've been well, working I understand that. yeah I've been working with the paranormal for five years um, I've believed in the paranormal ever since I was a child um, as far as the historical part of it I am a second generation historical researcher my mother was one but she did not do one on a paranormal level but she did you know she did whenever she was in certain locations or ever anything you know she always believed in everything that she was around and she always had uh, uh, certain situations going on that she uh, believed in all that stuff too and uh, of course okay. at the age of 14 she ended up taking me with her on all of her adventures of course she did it a lot off and on when I was little but when I got older enough to where uh, I was able to take a lot of notes too she thought "Ooh, okay well we're gonna put you into play too so you're gonna go with me and we're gonna go do this and we're gonna go do that and all that stuff Okay. So, uh. Okay, Gavin, how about you? <laughs> well. I, I, well I, I didn't know you went done. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Oh, yeah. D d let her continue. Go ahead. Um, there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Um, there's, uh, uh, of course, I'm proceeding on when I did get into the paranormal, uh, is when I had a house fire back in 2012. And we, after we had, I didn't completely kill, you know, or demolish our house. We just only had it in a partial part of the house that where it could be only structure damage and was able to, you know, rebuild and repair that area. Right after that, we started having some major activity and things started not being normal anymore. And of course, I live in a house that just turned 100 years old this year. So... We end up having some activity, and I was questioning it, and everybody thought I was crazy because no one else was experiencing what I was experiencing. She's nuts. No, I'm not. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, he, anyway, we just, I just started, you know, pilfering around, going, okay, stuff's going on. What finally got us convinced was two things in the house that everybody could not justify, could not figure out why, could not figure out the unexplained. And, at the, and my ex-husband at the time said, okay, we need to do an investigation. What it was, it sounded like someone was bouncing a ball down a hallway. No ball. But you could actually felt like it was maybe a basketball or something or some kind of ball that was just literally bouncing from one end of the hallway to the other end of the hallway. And everybody heard it. Every, I mean, I was in my room. I came out. My kids were in their rooms. They came out. At the time, my ex-husband's brother was staying with us and he was sleeping on the couch. And he got up and he went to the hallway and all of us heard it. That was the first. We all question it. We all try to figure it out. We had Couldn't no get, answer. Had no answer. The second one was that we had in the middle of the night, and it was me and my ex-husband and my brother-in-law at the time. He said he thought he heard something, but he couldn't guarantee it, and he was watching TV, but he kind of just blew it underneath, you know, kind of swept it underneath the mat type situation because he said he was tired and when he's tired he you know your observance of stuff can be a little fishy but the other two of us had heard it and uh and uh he uh um he uh well hold on don't run over me He had heard of uh, um, whispering sounds, and it sounded like right in the middle of the night that uh, uh, we had this big, loud 
like a whisper saying help me or something to that effect and and so after that that was the clue when he told me okay we're going to get the investigation and that's when I had Gavin which I had already known Gavin for three or four years already and he we was already talking about the paranormal uh, issues and everything going on and we and he was into watching ghost adventures and stuff and then that's when he plug into play which he'll lead you more into details of how we came about taking and doing the invest our first very first investigation on my house yeah that was a lot of fun too why are we echoing oh, cool. is, that, is that your mic making all that noise it sounds like somebody's like moving a mic around I'm, 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 I'm having like technical difficulties. I'm sorry. Ah. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, so wait a minute. It can't. It, yeah, I was like, wait a minute. It can't be us. We're, well, I thought that, we're coming from a I studio. I thought you all, and I'm like, well, I, I'm not going to be rude and say, hey, dude, you're Mike. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell y'all doing? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we're coming live from a studio, so I, I didn't think it was us, but I'm like, what is that? And uh, see, usually whenever we do, <laughs> so we, I did. I thought it was you all. Yeah, <laughs> whenever we do shows and stuff, we turn the air conditioner off because uh, that causes a lot of uh, interference with the noise, and we don't have that, so it's like quiet <laughs> where we are. But uh, what she was talking yeah. about after that house fire, um, all those activity uh, issues just started to happen. I was just like flipping through the channels. I was bored one night. I'm just like, ah, I gotta find something to watch. When I landed on Ghost Adventures, and I'm like, huh, this is kind of interesting. So I started watching the show, and I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool. Well, at that then, um, during that time, I had my ex too, and um, I was watching it, and I'm like, hey, this is this is pretty cool. So I wound up talking to uh, Aaron Goodwin on uh, Twitter. Now this is really before they took off you know and um mm -hmm. i told him what was going on with her house and he i kid you not his very exact words was do what we do i'm like okay what do you mean do what we do he goes, do what we do go and investigate okay i'm uh well i don't know the first thing about being a paranormal investigator and i sure as heck don't know what to do so he kind of <laughs> sort of told me you know you just got to get yourself a digital camera. I go, okay, well, I already have one of those. He goes, you need a digital recorder. I'm like, well, I had one since I was in college. Um, he goes, do you have a night vision camcorder? I'm like, uh, let's see. I have a, a Hi8 Sony Handycam, which runs on the uh, eight millimeter cassette. So you can imagine how old that is. And uh, I wound up using that and um what we wanted up doing was uh doing an investigation of her house um before we started that he told me to do research and find an ev uh, not an evp but a, a emf detector i go what is that <laughs> he had explained to me what it was and he told me to go ahead and do some research see if you can find something well I found the ghost meter pros which is inexpensive and it's highly sensitive so I figured what the heck we'll use it well we did an investigation of her house we killed the main everything I mean it was it was a dead house we got an EVP on my recorder that said leave me alone and of course the the one everybody gets at it, every location whenever it happens is get out and uh, we also got the name Frederick and come to find out there was a little boy that died of whooping cough here at the house uh, named Freddy and on his tombstone it says Frederick which is really freaky oh, wow. but we also found out that his grumpy old dad lives here too oh cool of course yeah so basically what happened there is I compiled all that stuff into a video and just put it on YouTube just to you know do peer review just let people uh, take a look at it let them tell us what they see in here i I didn't know anything about it. I'm just like, here, just, what do you guys see? I mean, do you hear something? Do you see something? Let me know. I just did that just for the heck of it. I mean, I didn't think, oh, my wildest dreams, what happened, did. I got contacted by a producer uh, of a network, 
independent network from South Haven, Mississippi. And he's like, I really like what you guys are doing. I noticed that you guys were constantly on the move. You're, you're not really sitting in a room saying, are you here? Can you make a noise? If you make a noise, can you do it again? He goes, I really like what you guys are doing. And uh, he goes, I want to sign you to my network. I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do? He goes, I want you to do more what you what I saw. I want you to give me some episodes. I'm like, okay. So at that time, my group was called the Phantasmic Ghost Hunters. And the show was called Phantasmic Ghost Hunters. And the thing is, the show was 13 episodes and it started from a learning curve. It was an entire learning curve of us learning the paranormal. So, I mean, it totally sucked. <laughs> Pardon my French. But <laughs> it was, we were uh, basically... You, you say whatever. Yeah, we were basically showing everybody what it's like to... Um, go along the path of being a paranormal investigator and I mean we screwed up here and there and we also learned from it and we showed our viewers you know we're learning from it and we're teaching them at the same time well in a year's time we gave his independent network over 40,000 plus viewers Amazon caught wind of this and after we did a few crew changes got rid of the X's it's now just me and Paula and our camera crew um, we now call it the Paranormal Journey into the Unknown. It's an exclusive uh, new original series on Amazon, which uh, our first season is going to come out October 31st of this year. We have four episodes already locked in and loaded, ready to be released on that date. And of course, uh, first episode is going to be St. Albans Sanatorium. The second one is going to be Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. The third one is Jailhouse Pizza, and the fourth one is going to be the famed Monroe House. And then we start on uh, season two, which should probably come out in March next year. Oh, that's, so that's it in a handbag awesome. right there. So you was up here, you was up here in my neck of the woods, uh, uh, St. Albans. When was you at St. Albans, if you don't mind me asking? Back in, well, yeah, we've I mean, been there twice. Of, you know, We've been there tw twice or three times? Well, no, we've been there twice. Okay, we've been there twice. It was February of this past year, and then May the last... Let's see, February of this past year, and then May of last year. 2015? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, yeah. And the funny thing is, is she fell in love with that place. I love St. Albans. Um, it's, she's a sensitive and an empath. She didn't really, you know, blurt that out, but she is. And she made a connection with the St. Albans Sanatorium, and she started doing some in-depth uh, research on uh, the sanatorium. And believe it or not, she wound up uh, uncovering a lot of stuff that turned into a movie project where we have a Hollywood producer um, that has taken on the project. It's called Lucy, and we have full run of it full control of filming it, the cast, everything. The only thing he's going to do is all of the marketing, the advertising, and putting this bad boy in the theater in the fall of 2019. Oh, oh. She can tell you more well, about I it. I got a question for both of you all. Sure. Oh, okay. Well, uh, when have either one of you all seen an apparition or a ghost or a shadow figure or anything like that is, uh, with all your investigation so far? Well, the, um, when we started doing the episode for the Phantasmic Ghost Hunters, we were on episode four and we were at a place called the Carter's Mill in Simsonia, Kentucky. Just using my Hi8 handy cam from Sony. I was just panning the area while one of my investigators was going, hey, I think we have William Carter. And I didn't see it at the time of filming, but going through the evidence afterwards, we noticed we captured an apparition running. Oh, cool. The Holy Grail right there. It's on our YouTube channel. It's called uh, Full Bodied Apparition on the Move. And you can actually see it. You see the leg hike up and the arm go back had a lot of people trying to debunk that video saying it's light or it's a tree and I'm like dude that's a wall <laughs> and it was also foggy Dang. because it was like 30 degree weather 
and inside the fog you could actually hmm. see that figure running well i know we've talked to uh, a couple apparitions and one of them at the uh, major grand mansion there in whipple virginia mm -hmm. it was a guy walking by the door uh, from the basement and everybody was trying to say it was me Right. It was like a hundred degrees, man. Everybody had t-shirts and tank tops and shorts on. And this guy had a black vest and a long white sleeve shirt. <laughs> I know damn well it wasn't all of us. <laughs> right? <laughs> and there wasn't, no, there wasn't nobody around there dressed like that. Even, I have a, I have a guy that, uh, uh, on my team, he's a professor at Blitzville State College. And uh, he's a professor in videography and stuff like that. Right. I took it to him and I said, I want you to rip this apart. You tell me what we're seeing. And he kept it for like three months and he gave it back to me. He said, Rodney, I have no idea. What you got is what you see. Right, exactly. When it comes to evidence hey, for so, us, you know, you, you know, you really have to dig into it a fine tooth comb because if you don't, you're going to get eaten apart. And there, there was an instance yep. that was similar to what you went through, but, uh, our ex-producer went ahead and contacted me and said, Hey dude, it looks like that we captured a shadow person that appears and disappears. So he showed me the footage and I'm looking at it and I'm like, Holy crap. You see the person show up in the doorway and then gone. So we didn't want to really jump to conclusions just yet. So we started digging into it really, really deep and changing filters, changing lighting and everything. And after four hours of doing this and deliberating going back and forth back and forth back and forth we found out that it was paula running the dvr cable she stopped in front of the doorway and went around the other side <laughs> but anybody that would see that footage would automatically jump out of their skin because they think it's a shadow figure so mm -hmm. it happens oh yeah <laughs> most definitely well we we, we when y'all were doing your EVP sessions and stuff, uh, do, do you feel like or do you have evidence of uh, of uh, these entities communicating with you or, you know, or they're just odd words just out of the blue? When we were doing the uh, EVP session at the Carter's Mill, we were using the SB7. And now I know a lot of people will really look down on the SB7 because it's the power of suggestion however the location that we were at was an old mill a sawmill and a grain mill and the radio frequencies or stations or whatever are really not there it's just a bunch of static you may get a station here and there but we were in one of the mills and one of my investigators looked underneath the porch and said huh look they have jugs under here Looks like they did moonshine. And right across the SB7, you hear moonshine in like an old southern black lady voice. It had and a very southern accent. She did. Wow. And so Paula goes, Oh, okay. So we're talking to someone. How are you? And she said, Fine. Right. Right on the SB7. And then we went into the area that was. Uh, a grocery store well it was a market down below and there were living quarters up above she started talking to i believe it was either william or somebody and she was like what's your favorite color what is your favorite food and she was actually getting answers on the sb7 ask how many children he had and of course it coincided the answer that we got coincided with the research that i found out yeah because i did a little research in before but we went in to find out if i could play off these questions and if i whatever i got i was hoping to get the answers of what i found and you, I went in there and asked how many children she ha he had, and he blurted out seven, which was correct. And then I asked, I said, there was an old pickup truck that used to sit out on this property a long time ago. Was it yours? And then he, of course, we got the word yes. Mm -hmm. And then I said, do you remember what type of vehicle that was? Because I don't remember what it was. And he, of course... I knew, but I played it off as if I did not know. Right. And, uh, of course, I got across the, the Ford pickup. Yeah, I said Ford. So, I, I went to bat for the SB7 over a lot of people sitting there saying, oh, it's the power of suggestion. And I went ahead and told them, I said, okay, well, this is what we got that day. Tell me it's the power of suggestion. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what is your opinion about ghost boxes? Well, I mean, for us, it actually worked. I mean, there are some times when you will get a radio station and you're actually going to grab a word here and there pertaining to whatever is on that radio show. But when you're in an area that has very minimal uh, RF frequencies and you're getting a voice, it's really hard to say that it's a radio station or maybe something that you're talking to. Um, but then of course, when you start digging into different devices like the Ovulus, which the one has a built-in dictionary that spits out random words, uh, that one, it kinda did work for us sometimes. Other than that, it just blurts out random words that just don't mean anything. And what it wants us to do is try to build a story using it, just, you know, psychologically, so to speak. And we don't really want to do that. Ain't that right? Yeah. So. Well, 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 how many investigations have you all, you know, conducted, you know, within the few years that you all have been oh, doing wow. paranormal research? <laughs> a lot. A lot. A I mean, lot. I mean, we, we range from... 12 to 20 per year yeah i mean we went from the far reaches to uh anaheim california to the queen mary to well, let's see that's the far west far south we went to corpus christi texas to the uss lexington uh far east we went to st Albans sanatorium in radford virginia and then basically everything in between i mean we've been to ashmore estate we've been to waverly hills um, we've been to Melbourne Manor. Melbourne Manor. We've been to Monroe House, to Hartford City Jail, Hartford City Speak Easy. Um, <laughs> you just basically name it. We've possibly been there. Plus, did a few things in our hometown. Oh, yeah. We did a lot of stuff in our hometown. Plus, also, our neighboring uh, state. Locations well, that well, no one's ever stepped you, in. Do you do, like, commercial or residential, you know, or cemeteries? Uh, we, we've only done two or three cemeteries. I'm just not one of those that, I guess I'm not, I'm not scared of the cemeteries, but I just, you know, I'm not cemetery friendly. You know what I mean? You don't want a cemetery hop. I just don't, yeah, I just don't, I'm not a cemetery hop type person. I right. mean, we've done two or three cemeteries, but I was just one of those, okay, I've experienced it, I've done it, it's not me. Right. And I'm just like, I don't, okay. you know, more, the, the more evidence I've had is going into, uh, you know, going into actual buildings, actual locations. Historical buildings. Especially historical buildings. Um, I'm, you know, I'm all about history and about historical stuff. I mean, we did do three very interesting cemeteries. I do have to admit that. Right. But they were just not my cup of tea after the third one. I was like, well, we need to, you know, we had both discussed about we need to tear this towards something else. Because, I mean, we did get a few things and we did have a couple of interesting few things that happened to us in a cemetery. But it's just one of those deals that, you know, I, it's just not, I, I lead towards more historical, more structural, more uh, uh, feel of. I need to have that the building around me you know what because a graveyard is so open space that I'm one of those that in order to feel like I'm actually investigating and getting something that's understandable I just I guess I have to have that 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 structure around me that's about right did we lose you Hello. Oh, wow. Uh, Rodney? We're still on. Yeah, I know. I think he dropped. Huh. Hello? Rodney. All right, we'll, we'll call you back. We'll see if we can get him back. That's really interesting. It just totally bombed. Just dropped. 
Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please hold and you will be able to listen to the show. Uh, let me see. Let me send him a message. Hey, Hello. Wh- what happened? Hey, we're here. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm going to have a little chit chat with Blog Talk about this. Law, have mercy. Hello. Uh, let me see. Are hey. There now? Yeah, we're here. Hey. What happened? There we go. What I happened? I don't know. I just was. I was talking, and then I lost y'all. Yeah, <laughs> we we were like, uh, hello, hello, and it just went dead. I'm like, where did he go? <laughs> well, I don't know what. Uh, past two or three weeks, I've been, and, and apparently it ain't just me because they got a little post here on the studio saying uh-huh. that they've been receiving re- uh, reports of hosts having trouble connecting. Oh, lovely. So, well, Blog talk. I th- but I, y'all want to get on ball blog talk. <laughs> well, see, that's the reason why we're not on yeah. any of those things. We do ours straight on YouTube and Facebook Live, and we just do ours out of the studio. We're not going to sit there and go to, you know, blog talk radio and all that stuff because I've I've heard that a lot of those uh, formats are actually having issues where your call drops or it gets staticky and all that. So. The way we're doing it, it's perfect. And plus, also, we don't have to worry about taking commercials, and we can stay on as long as we want. Well, that's that's what I may have to do because I tell you, I've been doing this for going on two years now, and oh wow, here in the past, like I said, past months, it's starting to get it's starting to get crappy, and I don't like it. It yeah, folks, you know, here guests like you all are like, hello, <laughs> and <laughs> right? Mom, and she can't get on. And she's like, hello, and I'm like. I can't hear nobody. Can you hear me? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We uh, were doing a podcast, our Fantasmic uh, Journey podcast last night with two of our guests. And uh, Facebook Live crapped out on us. I mean, it just stopped. And then it fired back up. And then it just bombed. It was gone. So I'm like, okay. Told everybody, go over to YouTube because we do YouTube and Facebook Live at the same time. So that way we're doing the best of both worlds. So one fails. Hey, we got one still going. I'm praising YouTube galore, you know. I'm like, come to, to YouTube. You guys can check out all the uh, animations and the graphics. And all of a sudden, when we're talking to our second guest, 20 minutes at, toward the end of the show, the video freezes, but we still have audio. <laughs> wow. I'm like, you have got well, to be kidding maybe, me. Maybe maybe everybody's having some kind of technical... Well, we've all been hacked. That's what it is. We've all been hacked. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> it's just whenever we start talking about paranormal stuff and ghosts, and it just basically uh, it starts taking over. Like, hey, they're talking about it. Let's mess up their stuff. <laughs> yeah, let's let's just let's just make them. Let's let's make the big man pissed off. Let's just do well, that. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna whip out my mail meter here and say, hey, touch this red light. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, the question I was asking before I. Notice I lost everything. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What are what are y'all's techniques? You know, such as when you're uh, uh, working at a uh, uh, a site. Uh, you know, do you go into a case scientific, religious, metaphysical, or just spiritual? You know, based on the information uh, or the history of the location. I'm gonna let her take that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, I mean, each case is different. I mean. I mean, we have been to a location that supposedly a demon is in the house. Um, we've been in uh, a lo- uh, several locations. We've been to several locations that have never been investigated before. Yep. And sometimes I just read cases or I read stuff that I'm like, okay, this sparks an interest to me. This might be something interesting that we might want to check into it. I do a little bit of field work. Um before we think about taking on the the challenge because if I do a little field work and maybe talk to a couple other investigators that might have went in there and did something or whatever and and I just read off their vibes of you know the, what their location might have been or whatever and they're like eh you know and and I mean we do pick and choose but for the show and stuff but uh stories drawn to me and certain things that people send to us or people that gives us contacts and stuff because and 
you know, we just have to, like, play it out as in, okay, this could be interesting, this could be fun, this could be exciting, and, and then I've had some, because we've had a couple of locations, and, and that's how I've set my guard up on stuff, because we literally had one location that we went to that it ended up being a hoax. Huh. And that's when we started pulling our guard up really good because we came in there. And, and the deal is, the stories that they were giving us and the history they were giving us just did not seem to add up at the location. And the place was haunted and it did have something there, but not what they thought and wrote this in and told stories about and everything there. And we went in there and investigated. Of course, we got a couple of things that we that was interesting that happened there. But I don't think it's based on what they have told everybody that was there. And this was a house that was in Indiana that we went to. And the house was almost 100 years old. There was a, Supposedly, the story was that the man had committed suicide on the second floor and shot his head off. Mm -hmm. And so they had what grabbed us, which we didn't know no better at the time, and then we learned more after we had did the investigation and we felt like we had been made a fool of. Oh yeah, most definitely. So after that, wow. we red flagged everything that comes in. And we take things to, okay, we take it a case like a grain of salt and we build each grain on top of that to find out if this isn't up and up or is this something that we're going to go into and they're just wanting to do something to get us on the to get on our show and doing it you know and that was one location made us learn how to turn red flags on on each case file that we get yeah i mean because they wound up sending Ooh. us a picture that showed a guy um in like a suit with uh supposedly no head but we did see a head with a top hat and uh i wound up giving this to a couple friends i'm like hey you gotta check this out we were we went to a place that actually had this they took this picture just you know they started hearing stuff and this one particular room just kind of really threw them for a loop sort of like hey we're gonna start taking pictures and they did and they sent me the picture and i'm like okay well, i'm gonna take a look at this and i showed her and she's like all right well let's uh well, let's go over there and see what we can do i took that very same picture and gave it to two of my friends and uh he came back and said dude you do know that this is uh from a ghost app i'm like what do you mean and he showed me the exact same figure that was in a category of ghost pictures on a ghost app for an iPhone. Wow. So yeah, we were basically... Yeah, people, try, people tried to do that to me too. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we basically... If they, if, if they can fool you, they'll do it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, after, after that happened, we kind of stopped doing residentials because the people that were contacting us know that we have a show. And they figure, hey, you know, they go ahead and investigate my house. I'll be on a show. So we yeah. we kind of yeah. stopped on residential, except if they are close personal friends, and we know they won't do that. And of course, when we do that, we're not filming it for the show. We're actually doing it for them, helping them out. And you know, at that time, mm -hmm. we did do good on that. Yeah. And and we got some really cool evidence on that. But you know, it's stuff that we can't you know give out because it's all classified do for uh you know the client but they were not into it for us to film it and put it out on tv so that was a good thing yeah but she wanted because since she was she didn't want strangers in her house and she knew us yeah. and she was like i know you i and i'd rather have you guys come in i know y'all have a show and y'all don't have time but if you ever have any downtime i really want you to come and investigate my house and I told her I would, and she says thank you because I don't trust. Because there—that's the other thing that we have to realize as paranormal investigators. We have these people that, if you all do do residentials, these people you have you have to have a trust factor going on. Yep. And I've had mm -hmm. seen and I have heard investigating groups that put it this way. After that people are eerie about having people come into their home oh yeah because yeah. one of the things that um we did a round table 
uh, probably about two years ago or so. And one of the main pet peeves of that round table was groups that were going out and doing investigation at residential locations, posting the pictures of the inside of the house, the location, and possibly going live while they're at a residential house. Now, you're basically giving away the privacy of the client. You're showing people where you're at, and you're also showing their prized possessions and everything, and that's just freaking wrong, and obviously they didn't see anything that was wrong with that. No. Mm -hmm. Some of them even post the addresses of where they're going to be at. Yeah, which is really stupid. And I was like, seriously, these people were game and gave you confidentiality to come into their house and to help them out, not a publicity stunt. Mm -hmm. That was kind of crazy. Well, that's, that's like with uh, when we do an investigation of residential. You know, I have forms I have filled out by the clients, and if they don't want me to post any photos, I won't post anything. Yeah. And I also give them a copy of everything and let them go over it to make sure. Even after they sign off, say, "Yeah, you go ahead and post it. I don't, I don't care." Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I want that second. You know, are you sure this is okay? Right. And if they say, yeah, fine, I will. If they say no, then I don't. Right. You know, there's, a, there's been a lot of cases that, you know, they don't, even, they don't want me to even list where they're at. And I'm, hey, I'm cool with that. Exactly. But some people, you know, around here, they, you know, I guess they like the idea of, uh, you know, hey, look, I told you my house is haunted and or right. I got something going on. I'm not crazy. <laughs> yep. So, uh, so what's y'all's favorite uh, piece of equipment that y'all investigate with and what uh, tools do you all use to do your investigations? Oh gosh, we, we use a lot of tools from uh, the FLIR Thermal to the MF1, which is the Eddy from uh, Syntex Technologies. It's that three-in-one device that has temperature, EMF, as well as the geofoam built in. And of course, when you know, we use the uh, millimeter with the rim feature on it but we use a lot of devices and stuff from our sponsors we uh go ahead and demonstrate their product on our show so we're actually learning how to use their devices and we got different rim pods from like uh paratronics they're really cool i mean this is taking the whole rim pod a whole different direction because you know a regular rim pod is just for static and has the antenna and once uh, anything interferes with uh that uh uh what's the word i'm looking for uh oh crap the, i just say the proximity of the uh antenna it sets it off well paratronics came up with a rim pod just like that but adds a 360 motion detector in it so if it doesn't detect static it can detect motion and it fires off our laser in the general direction where the motion was actually uh, taking place. Wow. Yeah, and we use it at the Monroe House. If you watched that video that we posted where the camera moved by itself, mm -hmm. the REM pod went off because it detected motion. Next thing you know, our camera moves all by itself. It actually shifts, and nobody was even in, in the house in that area. Paula and our ex-producer was actually in the living room, and me and Matt Benton were outside at the command center trailer in the yard. And also that camera is just moving all by itself and we got different angles showing it and it's like wow so that REM pod is really cool and Paula uses a really cool application called Alice which comes out of the UK it runs on your laptop um, it does have it's similar to the ovulus because it has a built-in dictionary and uh, the deal is with this one I don't know how it actually works the uh, thing is it does is basically the same thing like the ovulus it'll spit out random words however this one has been 98 percent accurate at every single location we have been at i mean it's just not a wow. fluke i i can't explain it and i mean one of the things that was really odd about it is the first time we used it we took it to the gulf coast paracon and it started popping stuff up like insect, infestation, bird, and then it said cage. And I'm like, what is this thing talking about? 
I opened up the curtain behind our booth and in behind that curtain was a wall, uh, a window. Inside on the other side of that window was a cage with a parrot and an infestation of roaches on the bottom. Ooh. Yeah. Now, Dang. how would <laughs> Alice even know that? And then it started spitting stuff out where Paula and another lady, Christine, were actually taking notes. And she actually went to a curator at the, the library. Yeah, on the second floor. Yeah, and they validated every single thing Alice was spitting out, dealing with something to do with the Jefferson Davis house and plantation. Wow. So has there been any investigations there at the Jefferson house? Oh, yeah. there's uh, uh, They have what the thing they call Meet the Spirits once a month. And uh, they mm -hmm. have uh, those public investigations. Um, they do uh, the big investigation once a year during the Paracon. Um, there's a couple of other things that they've done down there. And they're in, they, they encourage the paranormal activity stuff going on down there. Um, uh, it, it's a pretty cool place. I don't know if you've ever been or not, but I, it's enjoyable. Oh yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's really interesting. Oh, it sounds like it. Well, have any of the two of you been, you know, physically or emotionally or spiritually attacked by any unknown entity? And if so, can you explain, you know, what happened? Man, I have been scratched, pushed, tugged, tripped. Uh, just recently, we were at a place where it's not even deemed haunted. Nobody knew it was haunted. And we were doing a Facebook Live at the uh, McCracken, not McCracken, there I go Massac. again, Massac County Courthouse. And I got pushed down the stairs while live on Facebook. Oh, man. But Paula over here, she got scratched at the Malvern Manor in Malvern, Iowa. She was in Hank's bedroom, and he don't like women. He likes to taunt them. Well, she was just being a... A little aggravated. All right, doggy, make a noise. And all of a sudden, she's like, "I got a burning sensation on my back." And I, I could you know, I was like, "Yes, you got scratched." She goes, "Although I'm not sharing your enthusiasm, can you come over here and look?" <laughs> and sure enough, she got scratched right down the, the middle of her back, under her bra strap, where she could not do that herself because she'd been on camera. I've had her filmed while she has been sitting here talking to Hank. So there's no way she could have did it herself. Well, where it was at, there was no way I could reach it anyway. It was dead right. center in my back above my bra strap, and there's no way I can reach that unless I was a contortionist, and, that, and definitely not. Wow. Oh. Well, you know, you mentioned uh, demons earlier. You know, have you all ever experienced the demon or, you know, any location that may have no claims of a demon and you know what's your opinions about demons no i we have not encountered a demon what is wrong with the dog i don't know i gotta go find out we got a dog howling you can hear him <laughs> in the background right he's just howling yeah, he's probably wanting to just like, give me a bone <laughs> maybe i don't know wow wow sounds like he's being murdered yeah. I don't know. Probably uh, hurt himself. I mean, he was jumping around and stuff while, we, while we've been talking, so I don't know. It's very well possible he probably pulled a muscle or not pulled his leg out or something. I don't know. But uh, as for demons, no, we've never encountered them. We've been to a place, supposedly, quote unquote, that there is a demon. And I mean, it comes across on an obvious demon, but that's usually happens all the time uh apparently so but we are going to be going to another place that the hinsdale house in new york i've heard very little about that place but what i've heard it has to do with a hanging witches and a demon so i'm thinking this is probably going to be the big one for us because we never really uh encountered a dynamic uh, a demonic, <laughs> a d demonic <laughs> presence, uh, you know, during an investigation. 
I mean, sure, we might be talking to a spirit that is, you know, was a, a dickhead when he was alive, and he's a dickhead while he's dead. So, but I really right. doubt that he's a demon, you know. Mm-hmm. So, well, what's your opinion on what a ghost could be, you know, and 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 what's your opinion on why spirits, if it's what they are, you know, still linger and not move on? I really believe that it is uh, a person that uh, wants to stick around till its loved one is actually uh, done with the grieving and, and basically realizes that they can go ahead and everything is okay. They don't need to grieve anymore and then they can just go on. Usually they stick around to make sure that everything is okay, that they can cope with your passing and you can actually be there to kind of give them a remembrance here and there you know do something wow that's great paula thanks appreciate that now that's a, just a mental image i don't even want to have but but thank you hey is your show is your show censored <laughs> No, it's a, you can say whatever you want to say. Oh, okay, well, the dog wiener got stuck in his collar. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's I why he was... Sc- too, well, we have a female dog in the neighborhood. Isn't That's he? why he's got, screaming. Well, so we've got the back windows open, and, well, he's in a humping stage right now, and, <laughs> well, we have a harness system set up on him so it's easier to grab because he's a little Boston Terrier, and, well, uh-huh. he got a little bit too action on himself and the stuffed animal back there, and he got caught in the wrong spot, and that's what he was screaming for. <laughs> <laughs> So he got stuck that's in the harness. Shit, awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's just something you really don't want to share. But you know what? We're down to earth people. We'll share anything. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. So, dear, how about you? What? Your, your thoughts about uh, demons? Have we encountered them? And uh, have you seen one? You? No, not as I. I mean. I know that we went to the Monroe house. Yep. But personally, did I experience anything evil there? No. Yeah. Um, we've had other groups that have been there and said they have experienced some interesting things. But right. N- per- when we went to investigate, I mean, we got some cool stuff there, I have to admit. Yeah. But anything evil wise, I don't think so. But uh, that's a questionable. I mean, we've caught a picture of what it looked like was a demon one time. Oh, the Weldon Manor? Yeah, that's right. It, it does look kind of creepy. I'll have to show you it. Um, Weldon Manor is a building that is in Central City, Kentucky. And uh, they actually use it as like apartments for the railroad. And then it turned into a auto shop. And it turned into a uh, grocery store. Not a grocery store. A market. Um, stores and a brothel on the back I mean it was basically a lot of stuff all rolled into one and there is one particular hallway and we were just snapping pictures sure enough we snapped a picture it looks like a demon holding a girl and a boy and you can see the facial features of the girl which resembles the girl that they have that runs around there named Maggie but the little boy nobody knows about but you can see it plain as day. He, whatever it is, is holding them, and it's in the picture. And it's like, oh my god! Wow! But we didn't encounter well, it. We just well, took a picture. <laughs> well, what do y'all find most challenging when you're, you know, when you're on an investigation? Communication thinking that's usually the most challenging thing trying to uh, communicate whatever it is because I mean first of all when you go in you've got to now this is basically some of our methodology but when we go into a location we try to make whatever entity or spirits that is there comfortable with us when we start talking to the spirits we're talking to them like they're actually in the same room with us sitting on the couch like I would be talking to Paula it's the same way we would be talking to them 
just to you know get them more comfortable with us just instead of going in there hey do you know why you're dead <laughs> you, you know <laughs> why did you die you know did you get murdered you you don't really come right out and ask that stuff because it's very well possible the person that you're talking to does not know they're dead mm-hmm. so that's you know one of the things that we do is we, we like to go ahead and make them comfortable yeah know? we i mean we you just have your uh well, you know your regular conversation as if i had came and visit you and i didn't know who you were and I introduce myself, and I'll be like, okay, what is your name? Okay. Now, I do ask if you're a male or a female because I like to, you know, how your questions are persuaded. If it's a female, you do a little different quarterly than you would have talking to a male or a child. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, it all depends, you know. And if I know a little bit about the history of the location, um, I can kind of blend in the conversation into... Oh, so you've lived here for a long time, and can you tell me something about the room, or who did the crown moaning up here, you know? Uh, do you know by who the architect design is? And it's interesting, when you do stuff like that, you actually get more back than you have being blunt. Like some of these investigators coming in, oh, I did this and this and this, I might have had one VEPC. I said, how did you conduct it? Because I found out if you be personal with them on a certain level, they'll open up to you even a whole lot little more. And I've learned how it's not just the spirits that are talking to you, and you'll think I'm crazy on this, but I really believe the building helps the spirits talk to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can agree with that. I can see that. And then besides that, you know, there are times when you feel that a spirit is, is having fun or playing around with you. And that's when you kind of got to go, uh, you know, show yourself. Because like when we were at the courthouse, we could hear something moving around way up above us. And then next thing you know, the rope is moving that's actually attached to a ladder. And we were just kind of getting to the point like it was toying with us. It was messing around. So I'm like, all right. We know you're up there. Show yourself. So I'm not really taunting. I'm not provoking. I'm just basically calling it out because we know it's up there. And we made it clear that we know it's up there. So go ahead and show yourself. But other than that, usually we just talk to them like they're in the same room with us. We'll actually pretend we're visualizing. We see them. And we're talking to them. So if you ever like watch the videos and you see us talking in a general direction, it's, we might be just talking to a wall, but actually we're talking to one of them <laughs> right well what kind of mistakes have y'all made on an investigation stakes or states mistakes mistakes, mistakes. screw mistakes. ups oh okay yeah. oh screw ups oh geez um let's see <laughs> uh i sent an investigator up to the third floor of ashmore estates with a camera with no sd card in it Oh my, gosh. oh my gosh and he's up there he's having a good old time he's filming and he comes back and and he's like um the camera stopped i'm like what do you mean he goes well it was on and then it i'm i'm recording and then it stops and then i turn it back on again and i, I open it up and I look i'm like oh oops there's no sd card in here Oopsie. <laughs> Oopsie. that was kind of funny how about you but you, you could um Thank goodness you didn't do like what happened to uh, us one time we was on an investigation. What'd you do? I'd been out and, uh, uh, well, the guy that set up the uh, cameras and the DVR and all that good stuff, Uh uh, you know, we'd been out there for about two or three hours and I go in to take a break and start watching the monitors and I'm like, why ain't the little red light on? So I looked at the record button, I pushed it and the light came on and I pushed it again. Oh, no. so I rewind back to see how much uh, have been recorded. It was just that little bit that I, when I pushed the record button. <laughs> yeah. You, they said they could hear, hear me in two states, cousin. <laughs> oh, I'll bet. Well, see, we're lucky with our DVR. Once you attach the camera to it, boom, it automatically starts uh-huh. recording all by itself. <laughs> <Air's didn't. laughs> So, of course, we had our DVR system crash one time, and we didn't realize it until three fourths through the investigation. When yeah. we were going over there, going, "Why is the little red lights not working?" 
Well, it and wasn't that. It was flashing H, and there were no R's anywhere on the screens. It was and, jailhouse pizza. And we're over there going, okay, there's wow. not anything going on. And then that's when we realized, oh, the system had crashed. And well, the reason why, it was 95 degrees outside, but you have to remember we use a command center, so it doubled that inside the command center, so the DVR system overheated. Yeah. So wow. I was like, oh, crap. And when it did, it messed something up where I had to replace the hard drive, which I did. And uh, we used it over at the um, Hartford City Jail and the Monroe House, and it worked just fine. That's good. Well, ha have you two ever been afraid on a location, you know, during an investigation? I've never been afraid, but getting pushed almost pushed down the stairs carrying a four hundred dollar three axis gimbal that really scares the shit out of you <laughs> yeah <laughs> anytime you got equipment in your hand and you get ready to uh, take a tumble yeah that scared the shit out of me mm-hmm that's why i was i freaked out what nature will scare you more than the spirits nature yeah oh yeah well if you're not looking where you're going and you like impale yourself on a tree no, we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about a bird. Oh, that's when you peed yourself. Yeah, and it wasn't for the fact of the spirit. It was the fact <laughs> that I was not prepared. Didn't know that bird was going to be there. You're walking through a cemetery. Yes, this is one of the cemeteries we went to. And I think that was part of the reason why I don't want to do cemeteries ever again. Because of that incident. There's this, I don't know what the birds are called. I looked them up after I got home that night. But I don't remember what they're called now. But there are birds that make make uh, make their nest in the floor. Yeah, make in the, ground. The, in the ground. Yeah, they dig up the ground a little bit and they make their nest. But when they're in it, you if you're walking across the cemetery, you can't really see them because they're barreled down really good. And if the grass looks like it hasn't been mowed in a little while and it's a little high, they camouflage themselves very very easily. So I'm walking through across the cemetery and and we're all like kind of together and next thing you know this we are like i mean we're like three feet away from this bird <laughs> this bird birds uh, there were two of them yeah there was two of them these birds <laughs> just fly up in front of our face and right towards us and and i'm just like she peed yes i did <laughs> Because I was not too sure what. Because at first I'm not too sure what happened. I was like, and I'm like, okay. I did worse. I screamed like a girl. Because <laughs> we were. <laughs> so it's not the fact that we're not got scared by spirits. We got scared by two birds at a cemetery who had their own little nesting and didn't have a radar on them. Right. They didn't have a light on them or a reflective tape what? or any of that. <laughs> That's Ruth by Robin. She she uh, carries extra bloomers with her when, she, when we go on investigation. <laughs> she got scared one time and she pee peed on herself. <laughs> oh jeez. But uh, you know we don't really quote unquote get scared. I mean we're actually accepting it and expecting it. Like um, when we were in that same cemetery before we got to the birds, I felt what looked like a hand cup my shoulder and I'm like okay I'm being touched right now I can feel a hand cupping my shoulder so everybody usually asks us about it, well did you scream did you run I'm like no actually I was in a cemetery I kind of expected it now the birds on the other hand <laughs> I did not <laughs> expect that what expected and not expecting that mm -mm. Nope. Well, what, what what's the strangest or the weirdest case that you've ever worked Oh, wow. case. Um, I'm gonna play the Jeopardy thong in a separate in a second. Well, I'm thinking. I'm trying to. <laughs> I mean, on, on a personal experience, I don't think it was really strange, but I felt uncomfortable. Okay. And that was at Melvern Manor in that attic. You that was the only time, and I didn't feel, uh, I don't really say scared. I just, one of those deals that I didn't want to go up there by myself because. Like that's I, scared. Well, 
If you didn't want to go by yourself, you were you were frightened. You were scared. Okay, whatever was up there in that attic, because the fact is I'm a sensitive and an empath, yeah. did not want me up there. Oh. And I felt like I was not welcomed. All I know is whatever was up there set off the laser on the the, uh, the REM pod. And, and every time I walked there, I had to stay on the right side of the attic because every time I go over to the left side of the attic, whatever it was, it was messing with me mentally. Okay. And it was one of those deals that I felt very uncomfortable. And I'm one of those that if I feel very uncomfortable, I don't push myself to the point because for me, if I get into a situation, I've learned it from experience. That if I push myself into the experience, because I'm still learning as I go, and when I push myself into experience, it causes me to have major headaches and I can leave with migraines for three days. So I've gotten to the point that I push myself a little bit, but I know where my breaking point is. And a lot of places I've always had control and I was always be able to do what you know I needed to be done, or if I, you know, some places are welcoming and I can be very you know I can feel very sensitive and I have ones that they kind of know that I can sense them and they stay away and but this one here it was I don't know if it was anger it, it felt it felt like I had opened Pandora's box not really a Pandora's box but I felt like I was put inside of a furnace so you were burning because I felt very hot I felt my blood pressure rising I felt like, you know, I was going to be, I felt like I was being pushed into a situation that I felt very uncomfortable with, and I told Gavin I did not want to be up there by myself because it wasn't the fact of being scared, it was the fact to be is if I was up there by myself and something did happen, and because I have gotten to the point that I was in a location that it did mess with me to the point I started throwing up and I had to leave the location because I was, it was too much for me and I ended up having, was really bad sick for at least two hours. And so it Damn. does put a physical strain on me sometimes and it has happened to me once to where I had to walk away for 45 minutes to an hour for the building before I could re-enter it. And so, and that was at Melbourne Manor the very first time we went there. Mm -hmm. And I was literally in tears and I was crying. That's oh, how that, bad it that, was. Not the Malvern, that was the uh, Weldon. The Weldon Manor. And I was literally crying and, and I was sitting out there in the truck and I told Gavin, I said, I don't know if I can go back in or not. And that's when I realized that I was at end because I didn't know what was going on with me. And I knew I was a sensitive to a certain point, but then that's when everything broke loose and and I found out that I was more than what I was. And I still don't know exactly what all I can do, but I've had a little, at least eight psychics tell me that you have a gift and you need to learn how to open your curtains. And I don't know exactly how to open my curtains yet, but I'm trying to learn and read and figuring out what I physically and mentally 100% can do but I know that I am a little bit of an empath because I've been studying journals and stuff like that about what empaths possibly different ways they do stuff and everything and I've learned to label myself to a certain extent on things anything past that I don't know but everything is a learning experience and each case is different and and each location is different never neither one of them is ever the same that is true. When did you first, you know, start realizing or, you know, maybe uh, having these uh, impulses or feelings or whatever empath, you know, does or have? When, when did this all start happening? When did this start? Well, actually, a little bit on my own house and... The deal is I really didn't know absolutely 100% that I was and the deal is I have to get into a little bit of personal history I was married to an ex-husband that was a very negative person 
and according to some psychics and mediums I read, I was talking to and everything, they said because I had such a negative energy around me, which was my ex-husband, and every psychic has told me that my ex-husband was completely a negative energy beyond belief, and they told me that's because I had so much, because they told me I've had it for a very long time. And that because I was around so much negative energy, because I came from a very negative ex-marriage, very it, it was very, very bad. And because I walked away from it, it took me about a year after that relationship ended to realize I started having, you know, things going on. And I started observing stuff, and I started pushing it, and I was telling... And I had contacted uh, one lady that, you know, because she kind of told me, she says, hey, you have a special gift. And I was looking at her strange going, oh, okay. And she's like, no, you do. And I said, you'll find out one of these days. And when you do, look me up on Facebook. I'll friend you. And I was like, okay. And, and you thought she was wacko. Yeah, and I thought she was wacko. I was like, oh, great. I got <laughs> one of them on me now. Okay. And so and then I started observing and started having issues. And, and. I don't know exactly when it really happened. I just know that my very strange experience happened when I was at the Wilden Manor. That was the one hard one that happened. And it just threw me overboard. And I didn't know exactly what was going on. It was freaking me out. And then after that, I was just like, you know, contacting her. And then, the, then we had a psychic and a medium there by mm -hmm. Skype, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in and California. And he validated everything that I was experiencing. And feeling. And feeling. Because he told me that, you know, and then later on, you know, he, I guess he had said through a couple of the people that he was friends with there that, that there was another person in the room that had the ability that she just didn't know how to use it. And that, they were talking about me. Yep. Wow. Hmm. And so from well, then yeah. on, I've been working oh. with different psychics. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. To an extent, they tell me, well, you're going to have to learn how to do it yourself, but we can teach you certain things. But if you're, you know, and I'm one of those that I'm taking things like a grain of salt. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. And then I'll be like, okay. And then I've, I, I've learned a few things. And I did experience something new that. I have talked to one of the psychic mediums after that experience, and she validated that, yeah, I just unopened another spot that I can do in whatever I, I consider myself to be. I don't know, but I had the experience at Massac County Courthouse on the second floor. We were doing an investigation in the main courtroom, mm. and it's when we were having a discussion, and and... Alice had popped up a few things and and the name Rebecca kept going up all over the court that whole courthouse and of course we ended up validating her with a psychic because we had a psychic friend pop on and validated who Rebecca was mm -hmm. and anyway while we were in the courtroom we had uh, a few things going on and something about Gavin had went over to this seat and had was playing it and putting the camera on the seat and it wasn't working so he decided to sit down on the, ski, the seat and hold the camera mm -hmm. and that's when we had the thing about seat kept popping up and I was like what about the seat and it got the word move and I yeah. was like okay move. move so I got up and I turned cool. around and looked at Gavin and I said I think somebody was sitting in that seat seat and you sat on them and they're wanting you to move and then, I was like, Oops. and I was like, who's sitting in that seat? And we had got the word mama. Well, come to find out later on that investigation, mama and Rebecca are the same person. So mama Rebecca was sitting in that seat and she was ticked because Gravin was sitting in her lap. So I didn't feel it. <laughs> so he got oh. up and he left and that take care of that little situation well, when I turned around and looked at the courtroom where you have you know you have the right side and the left side of seating in the courtroom and you have that aisle in the middle 
Well, right down the aisle in the middle, there was a gentleman. Just for a second, I looked up, and I could tell you every single detail, and I could still tell you every single detail that I saw. And I'm looking for a sketch artist who is really good at getting what I'm thinking in my head onto a piece of paper so that I would never forget it, and we could use it as some kind of evidence for this location. And it was a man in a khaki pants, a khaki shirt with his uh, with his uh, long sleeves but they were rolled up to his elbow he had gray salt and pepper hair he had some like some crow's feet and some little wrinkles around them uh, right underneath the nose area towards the chin and he had de deep sunken eyes I, the only thing I didn't know is what color his eyes were because I didn't see them and it was a matter of maybe a 5-10 second thing and it was that quick he had the long tie that was a darker brown than the nose browns and he was like in his 40s you know late like 45 to 50 years old and it was just you know for like a 5 or 10 seconds and I happened just to look down and then as soon as I got I looked back up he was gone it was a jailer and kind of find out I described exactly an old jailer that had not necessarily died, but he had worked many, many years at the courthouse because the jail's on the third floor. But he had worked many, many years at the jail, and he was a jailer. And I described him, and then uh, later on, I, the lady that helped us get into the jail contacted us, and she told me, I think I know who it is. And then we uh, kind of sort of thinking maybe we have validated I don't know but I've been looking for a sketch artist or uh, because our local our local uh, police department doesn't really have one and if they ever need a sketch artist they have to call someone from Lexington or Louisville to come in and do a sketch artist thing with a client if they're having to do something for a victim you know so we don't have one literally locally but i'm in looking for somebody that i could work with to get this memory out of my brain and get it on a piece of paper to show this is what i saw wow well do you all work with uh other psychics well the first time uh we we did that uh mass Act camp, uh courthouse um, we were doing our Facebook Live, like I stated. Uh, she was on Facebook Live, I was on Facebook Live, and we were seated on the, the bed in jail. And uh, our good friend uh, Lori Johnson, which is the psychic for uh, Ghost of Shepherdstown, she jumped in and she was telling us that she sees faces behind us. And sure enough, we look at the we look at the phone for Facebook Live, and there's two faces showing up on there. But when we turn around, and look at the wall. It's not there. We shine the light at the wall. Nothing there. Go back to the phone and the faces start coming through. And uh, she said, uh, she validated the thing about Rebecca. Um, but there was another one besides Lori. She dealt with uh, Mary Barrett when we were over at the uh, Southern... Southern Pop Con in Jackson, Tennessee. That's it. Go ahead and explain it. Well, she wanted, she was interested in my Alice program, and this is another thing I can validate Alice with. She was curious, and she had a, uh, she had a, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, she had a room where she did a reading, and she had a reading segment there. And before we had gone into doing the reading segment with her, um, we had set Alice up, and Alice had popped up a couple of names, and I was like, oh, well, who's this? And I said, I didn't think this place would be haunted, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. is Lucy trying to just, you know, acting up, and she's not really getting stuff? And uh, Mary came over there, and she saw that I was kind of puzzled and kind of trying to figure something out, and she's like, what's up? I said, you're stressed about something. I said, no, I'm not stressed. I'm just kind of confused. And I told her, I said, I've got this program called Alice that's uh, breaking up on uh, on here. And I wouldn't think this place is haunted or not. She says, here, I'm going to tell you a little story. And this is how I'm getting the reading of all this place. And then she started telling me about this. It used to be a little plantation where the, uh, uh, the fairgrounds is. And she said, before it was fairgrounds, it was a trash dump. 
Yep. And before the trash dump, it was a plantation, but it was an uh, orchard plantation. They sold, they grew apples and stuff like that. And uh, I told her, I said, well, I had gotten a name. And I told her what the name was. And she said, yes, there was a slave girl here by that name. And then, I, and then she would go on and tell stuff. And then I'd go back and get Alice. And Alice would start telling the same things that Mary was telling. And it kind of, you know, comes. She says, you know what? I'm going to put your, te- I'm going to put your program to the test. I said, I'm fixing to do a reading. And I want you to bring Alice over there. And I don't want to see Alice. I want you to hide Alice from me while I'm doing a, uh, a reading, you know, and, and, and we're going to do some past regression and all that stuff. Which Gavin got to do a past regression, by the way. And, yeah, uh, that was weird. <laughs> and uh, so we did some past regressions. And whatever Alice was coming up with, a couple of things where she was asking. She had put someone in a trance and was putting them through, you know, getting you know, their, their past regression type stuff. And I was getting stuff popped up on Alice two seconds before the uh, person that was in her press regression memories would start stating and then after she did you know the couple of press regressions then she did the round robin with the room and read the room and went to certain people and said you had this going on in your life and then I had this one that really pulled out on Alice and it talked about grandmother and it talked about sadness and it talked about and and crying and then we i had looked out to the crowd and i was like well there's a lady on the front row and she is in complete tears and i was like mary i said yeah i said you told me whenever alice you wanted yeah she goes yeah but i don't want to know at the end i said yes but i need you to go over there and i need you to read this lady that's crying and she's like, okay. So she goes over and reads this lady and is crying. She doesn't know what's going on on Alice. We're keeping dibs over in the corner where she doesn't even see. And all of a sudden we have Alice and, and Mary's talking to this lady. And she's talking about her grandmother had just passed away. She was very sad. And, and she felt that it was her fault that grandma blah, blah, blah. And we had gotten the word forgive on Alice. Mm-hmm. And two seconds before Mary said but your grandmother forgives you she says it was not your fault and and then went into detail and Alice was popping stuff out right before Mary was doing it and I felt like and, and I felt because I was a sensitive and empath I felt over empowered by all the spirits that were going on in the same time that you know Mary was doing this that I started feeling all these spirits and I felt the rush of sadness and I felt the rush of happiness and I felt the rush of feeling like someone felt relieved and it was just interesting and that whole room was just you know vibrant and everything and that was my really really full-fledged experience working with a psychic oh man we didn't lose you again did we hello Oh, good. Okay. (laughs) Man, we thought we lost you. Oh, shit. I was like, here we go again. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, God, don't tell me I just described this whole long spill for nothing. (laughs) You got, there's nothing else. We got you, didn't you, please? You got her whole story, right? Because that was a long one. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. Well, the one thing well, that she uh, didn't yeah. really go into oh, sorry, go is there was one lady that was doing the past life regression, and uh, we were using Alice, and she was talking to her and put her into a trance, and she asked, she was asking questions like, well, how did you die? Like that, you know? And the lady started crying. She said, I, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. And it's like, well, well, go ahead and tell us. She goes, I, I can't. On Alice, it said uh, head and then said shot. So we called Mary over Ooh. and said, do you need to look at this? And she looked at it and then she went back to the lady and she goes, did you get shot in the head? And the lady just totally lost it. Hey. That's some crazy shit right there. That's deep shit right there, man. Yep. Hey. Well, you know, with, with y'all's TV show and other paranormal TV shows out there, 
do you think that with with the airways you know being kind of flooded with some really great shows and some that's uh, <laughs> do, do you think it's hurting the paranormal field or helping it and where, where do you think the future of the paranormal and supernatural world is heading well I only watch the shows so I know what not to do during an investigation mm -hmm. that that's what I do but uh, she doesn't want to watch the shows because most of the shows are getting the history all screwed up. Oh, yeah, I get too mad at them. Oh, yeah, she, she gets pissed. I because mean, they're taking stories off of one person. This is what gets me, and it ticks me off, and I got to the point I don't watch them anymore because I want to write every one of those writers, and I want to tell them off. <laughs> because they have gone in there, and they take 15% of the story, and they modify to they, what they need to do to in, just to do... I'm one of those, you don't go in and you tell me two and a half minutes of a story. I want to go in there. Mm -hmm. If it takes you ten minutes to tell me exactly what needs to be done and that the history of a location and that if I have open-ended questions that need to be answered before we go into an investigation, do it. Hey, hey, don't scream in the microphone, dear God. Because, I, I mean, you go in there and you're doing two and a half minutes of a little history segment and then you, ex and then they got a minute, they got about half of that two and a half minutes is like really I can prove that didn't happen okay. but they take people's yeah, word I can see it. yeah and I mean that's one thing that we do different in our show if it takes us 10 minutes to do an interview to understand a location I want the location to be known what it's for and if there's a little bit of history mm -hmm. stuff I mean the Monroe house I helped the owner at the Monroe house solve a mystery about his house yep. and I had half the wow. see the deal is between me and him he f we both kind of figured it out because I had half of the information and when you try to do research from a distance you can only do so much yep. without having to knock on people's doors or pry into a couple of people's you know, where they want to shove you out the door or whatever unless you are from that town because they don't want to talk to strangers or deal with strangers because of the fact that we've had these big, huge TV crews come in here and this lady's willing to come in there. Oh, just give me a little information. I'll give you 20 bucks for your time, you know, type situation. And that has happened, by the way. And I've had met some of these. And, and I mean, I know the big shows that are on the networks are there for a good reason. They try to do, but I, it's impersonally, they're doing it for entertainment reasons. Because I have been to some of these locations that they have went, these shows have went to, and they have ticked the owners off. Oh, yeah. Yep. Number one, before you air a show, you need to give that information to the owners before you even release it. That's Most what we do. of those networks do not do that. Yeah, we, and they mess it up and they tick the owners wow. off. Owners don't want little shows like us to come in and after we come in and they see what we actually do and that we actually talk to them after we leave. I mean, I have actually talked to Eddie three times after we left. Eddie knows that once we have the episode done, he got to see it first before we even put it into season one to say he agreed with it or anything like that. Or, well, this is not right or not this is not right. But he was also one of those that... I helped him solve a mystery at, my, at the Monroe house and it took his side of the story and my side of the story that I found out that he didn't know that we were able to piece the information together and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, I mean, and that's what I do. That's, I mean, yes, it's great to be in the paranormal world, but with me being in historical research and coming from a background of, of history in my life, and I also have an associate's in arts, and I'm going back to getting a master's in history, and I'm eventually going to get a Ph.D. in history. And um, history is, you know, is important to the location that you're at because everybody can tell you a story about a low something that happened there and it might have happened there but what they have given you is 5% truth 95% lies or a twist to the story to make you believe it to make them come into your house or come into that location and investigate it 
I've got one now that I'm kind of working on right now that I'm just waiting until the in, until this episode comes out from this the situation because I already know what they're doing and I'm not happy about it. But once that location, oh yes, I'm fixing to tear them up. <laughs> oh damn. Oh yeah. Oh, I've already got haters, by the way. I've got two locations that hate me because I've proven them wrong. Oh yeah. I mean, there's so many locations to sit there and just make up stories so they can make a buck. And and the thing is, yeah. they totally dwell on it, even though they know it's fake. They know it's false, but hey, they're gonna keep telling it, and the tale just keeps going and growing. And I mean, we've got you know the specific location that we're talking about. And when I found out what they were saying, I went ahead and, and gave it to a friend of mine that actually did the same location. And she looked at me and she said, are you serious? They're saying that? I said, yep. So yeah, she like made her voice heard. Well, see, I ran into the same uh, problem. You all probably have heard of this place. It's Lake Shawnee. Uh, the one that has the, the amusement, uh, park? amusement park. Yeah. And, and uh, well, we investigated it, and uh, the guy who owned it, he's dead now, but I think his son owns it now. Okay. But we dug in, my historian dug in, and everything that he said was a lie, except there was one drowning of a little boy uh, back when they had a swimming pool there. That's true. Right. I know about and that one. And when I... When, when I told him about the little girl, you know, that's not true. Mm -hmm. There's no records of it, nothing, you know, and all the other stuff he claimed. He got offensive. He wouldn't even meet with me so uh, so I could bring him the stuff. Yeah. He, he said, just mail it to him. Yeah. And now they're over there making fists over money, you know, uh, mm -hmm. just like crazy. But, you know, it's their property. They can do what they want, but don't lie about it. I know. I mean, if you watched any of my posts on Facebook, I went off numerous times. I mean, one of the main ones is Myrtle's Plantation. There is no Chloe. There's no birth certificate for a Chloe. There's no death certificate for a Chloe. So they're capitalizing on a fictitious character. And the whole mm -hmm. story about Mr. Winters getting shot, dragging his body across lifeless the parlor floor up the stairs body. yeah lifeless body across the parlor floor up the stairs to die on the 13th or 17th step his horse shit because first of all he got shot he bled to death on the darn porch because that's where he died now think about it. if you drag your lifeless body like they say across the parlor floor your blood is going to seep into the carpet into the wood even if you replace the carpet, it yeah. doesn't matter. It's still going to seep through. You're going to see traces of blood, especially going upstairs. So I call bullshit on that. Yeah. But there's this other one that, where they're saying children died in a tunnel because due to a flood. And that is absolutely not true. They died of the epidemic of yellow fever and they were buried in the cemetery that's basically a, a little ways up from the location. But they did not die in the tunnel. And then there's another story that's going around with this uh, supervisor had an affair with this girl named Linda who was a teenager which is basically sacatory rape right there, and um, got her pregnant. Supervisor's wife found out about it, so he had to do something, and he wound up killing her and the baby. That is horse shit, too. That did not happen. Damn. And, well, this one location is actually dwelling on that. Well, that's what gets me with some of these locations. I mean, you can still, you know, make some money off the location, but at least tell the truth about the location. You don't oh, yeah. have to why make up bullshit stories yeah i know exactly. i forget i forget this i, I well, forget the stories the credibility of the location yeah i mean like uh bobby mackey's he's capitalizing on that johanna it's not even spelled right there was a jo uh, johanna that died but she didn't die there and she didn't die of poisoning it was a girl that uh died like four blocks away Wow. So there wow. was no stripper named Johanna that was pregnant and died of poisoning. No, that's not true. But there was a Joanne that did die in the building, but it was the owner's daughter. Right. And what she had done, she was wow. on some kind of medication and she, uh, she overdosed on her medications because back then, if you felt 
you were in pain or whatever, you kind of over medicate yourself, and that's what happened. She mm -hmm. over medicated herself. Yeah. So I mean, I'm beginning to question, Damn. starting to question a lot of location. That's the reason why I, I get a location. I let her dig into it because she's going to find the truth. And you know, when when they find the truth, she's gonna basically let it out. She don't care. Hell, <laughs> gonna let people know. I don't either. That's her. That's, that's the reason why I've got criticized a lot, especially locations that we've been to, a lot of residential places and stuff that, you know, when I, you know, when I present them with the history and, you know, all the information that we gather, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of get pissed off at me and they're like, well, that's bullshit. And I'm like, no, dude, that's in black and white. Yeah, it's and true. This is what we got. Yeah, it's like, it is true. <laughs> black and white, fully documented. What yeah. you're coming up with, it's horse shit. It, it doesn't exist, and it's not documented. It's made up. I mean, it's like, whenever we go ahead and, and talk about this, a lot of people would ask us about it, sometimes on the radio as well. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to put it in perspective for you in layman's terms. 1800s, I have a house. I have a scary tree in my backyard. My best friend comes over and says, hey, dude, I bet you they hung some people on that tree. That looks really freaky. Next thing you know, people were hung on my tree. Okay, a decade later... Yeah. People were hung on the tree. Someone was was murdered in the house, and two were buried in the backyard. You come to our day and age, our era. Fourteen people were uh, buried in the backyard. Six were murdered in the house. Two suicides. Uh, three people hung in the tree. One shot on the porch. Uh, a domestic dispute that turned into a murder suicide. I mean, it just can go on and on and on. Next thing you know. My house from the 1800s becomes the world's largest haunted house. And it all started with BS. Yep. You're right. So, I mean, there's a lot of places well, I'm beginning to seriously question. But um, we've also gotten those locations that have thanked us very much. And I know one right off the top of my head is Samantha. Oh, she yeah. has thanked us repeatedly because of, of of our history and of our research. It helped her save that building. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And she's got the Bethlehem Academy out and outside of Elizabethtown, Kentucky, which is mm -hmm. an all it was an all Catholic girls' school, and she obtained it and knew basic information about it. And I until you got the hold of it, until I got a hold <laughs> of it, and then she says, "Well, I don't know if I want you to come in and investigate it or not." But I'm going to tell you a few stories. And I says, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do a history research on it or for you and give you some details out. And then when I did that for her, she's like, okay, I need you to come in and investigate now. Yeah, and we did. It was interesting at that place. I got was told to leave the room. <laughs> yeah, he was told to get out. Actually, all the males could not investigate certain areas of the room because of the location because of the fact that it was an all-girls school run by all by catholic nuns and uh, there was only three men on the whole property one being the priest right. one being the uh the laborery stable gentleman that's in charge because there was a stables there and one was your basic gardener you know he handyman type person and the rest of them was meant females and pre and and nuns mm -hmm. and there were certain locations like the, especially the music room and the upstairs quarters where they had the classrooms and it was deemed as you know women only or girls only we got up there they guys had to get out we had some uh you know evps that were uh not happy and we had gotten a couple of german uh EVPs that we had to figure out what they were saying and I had to get up on my phone going okay we're going to do some translation okay, but you also need to mention all those voices were coming out of the echo box yeah echo. German German out of the echo box Whoa. I told Danny about that and he's like I've never heard German come out of it I'm like oh well we did yeah, and uh, oh, that's awesome. yeah, so so some rooms we couldn't get EVPs because the fact that the men were not welcome. And once we took the men and told them to go to base camp, and I had to rearrange the whole way we were going to have to do this investigation. Yep. I had to put my daughter in play because my daughter came with me, and she comes sometimes once in a blue moon and helps out at base camp and stuff. So I had to put her in play, which she didn't feel great about that, but. 
And then we had another friend of ours that usually does, you know, occasionally helps us with base camp too. And I told him, you know, we're going to have to keep a couple of females with this. We had to keep the guys at base camp. And this was the first time we had to do role reversal to where we couldn't put Gavin in play at this location. And the only way we could investigate this location was put my daughter in play and the girl that helped us out at base camp all the time, Sam, and put her in the other role of play and the owner i had to put her in play too but she wanted to be part of it anyway and it took us four to investigate bethlehem academy because gentlemen and men are were not welcome there i felt useless wow <laughs> so gavin had to play base camp man that night yeah I did. along with his cameraman yeah I, we got to sit there and watch dvr camera yeah because he was, I mean, literally, they were not getting anything. And Samantha kept saying, oh, there's stuff here. I'm going to tell you. I said, you know what? I have this feeling that we do not need the men up there. And so we, that's when I said, well, this is revamp this. And when we did, as soon as we went up there, we started getting stuff on meters. We started having stuff coming through the Echo Box. We had stuff going through the SB7. Uh, I wish I had Alice there at the time, and I'm oh, hoping. Oh, that would have been nice. I'm hoping that someday we can just go back, and because I know we've got to do a little bit of we have finish up back. stuff because we have to still do the interviews with the with the owners to put into our segment. That's one segment that's going to be part of season two. Yeah. And I didn't have Alice at the time when we did that investigation. I'm thinking about coming back and doing like a little daytime investigation and just adding it as you know into the episode with Alice just to see what Alice gets on it. Because Samantha says there has been more activity has been stirred up there since uh, we've left. Yeah, she's been seeing black shadows. Uh, she swore that when she was sitting in the truck that someone came up and knocked on the window. And when she turned around, it was a black figure. But then she, like, like turned around to get her husband's attention. It was gone. Yeah. So she's just That's like... That's the way it normally happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And see, the one thing well, about here, that... Here, oh. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I said, and one thing about that location, yes, there was a cemetery in the back of the property, but when the Catholics got rid of the property, they dug up all the nuns and moved them, and the two priests. Oh. Well, where they put them? They took and moved them to a Catholic cemetery about 20 miles down the road. Huh. Well, here, here's kind of an odd question I ask everybody, and it's it's weird the answers I get, but I'm going to hit you two up with it. All right. Uh, have, you, have have any of you all had an uh, out-of-body experience or astro-projected? If so, can you explain it? Not as I know of. Nope. Not, not that I can recall. Nope. <laughs> nope. I mean, I have strange freaking yeah. dreams when I sleep every once in a while, but no, I can't label myself on doing those two things. Nope. That just sounds weird. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it happened to me one time, scared the shit out of me. But. Well, what's y'all's opinion about Ouija boards? Do you all use them or uh, have an opinion about them? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. We refuse. Yeah. Not yeah. going to use it because don't you don't either. know who you're talking to and what doorway you're opening. Yep. Especially looking through the planchet. God knows what you see. Yeah. Well, have either of you two had any experiences other than paranormal, such as, you know, like crypto or any UFO encounters? No, but I watched a video earlier today that they were doing a live uh, weather broadcast, and they noticed two objects up in the sky, and one looked like it had thrusters because it kind of thrusted on up went diagonal toward the clouds and it stayed there and it thrust on up a little bit more and all of a sudden it just went zoop, gone i showed paula that i'm like Dang. you can't fake this this is freaking live it's coming off of a live broadcast of uh the, this weather uh thing that they were doing and the weather guy saw it and he's just like what what it, what is we're gonna have to look at this what is this and i mean it, it showed that it was thrustering up it got to a certain point and then vanished. So I'm like, hyperdrive. So I don't know. But I've never seen a Bigfoot. I've never seen... I, I really don't believe in UFOs unless that damn thing lands in my backyard. Pretty well much. <laughs> but when I saw that video, I'm like, hmm, I'm kind of thinking. I'm just thinking. That's all, though. 
I think well, they become Would y'all do an investigation if someone ask you about, you know, whether a Bigfoot or Chupacabra or UFO? A Chupacabra. <laughs> a Chupacabra? Am I saying that right? Now, you got to remember, I'm from up here in Appalachian Mountains. We, we can't say words right. <laughs> <laughs> She's I over here with a goat sucker from down in South America. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> she she's over here looking at me going, What the hell is that? I remember <laughs> I remember Sam and Dean killing one. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean uh huh. Well, I mean I've heard tales and just in our area, like land between the lakes and stuff, because 'cause we're yeah. right between the Kentucky Lake and the Barkley Lake. Yeah. I've heard there's beast. some kind of beast, some kind of hairy beast. They don't call him Bigfoot. They don't call him Saskatchewan or whatever else they call him. Uh, it's but a they homeless just, old man that has lots of hair. All I know is they call him a beast, <laughs> and people have spot him, you know, occasionally in LBL area. And have I gone to investigate it? No. Hell no. Harry and the Hendersons, I don't know. And, I, I mean... <laughs> Uh, that's just something I've just well, never y'all... was fantasized or even was enthused. Fantasized? You're going to fantasize about Bigfoot? You're, you're just weird. No, I didn't say <laughs> fantasize for him, but I mean it was, it was fantasized as in me actually going and doing it. Doing it. Oh. I just think that uh, personally, I'm thinking Bigfoot is just a figment of our, of our imagination because. They always say that they see him out of the corner of your eye. Next thing you know, he's gone. Well, hell, we see shadow figures out the corner of our eyes, and they're gone. Mm-hmm. As far as I know, it's an oversized hairy ape that got loose from the zoo. <laughs> I well, could so well, run with that. What do y'all think about that the TV show, American Monster Hunters, and those guys where they're up here in West Virginia hunting? Man, God knows why. We, we we are too busy. We have so much, so many irons in a fire. We don't even own a TV. No, we don't we watch don't. TV. We don't watch TV. I mean, there's like a couple of shows that we okay. love to watch that we get, you know, on Netflix. On Netflix. That's but, about it. Yeah. So that's yeah. We don't watch. We don't watch TV. Well, we don't. You know, we don't have time. Well, I, I watch. I watched them when they first came out, and I got so aggravated. I'm like, oh, my God. And we went up to the Mothman Festival a couple of weeks ago, and they were up there. Mm-hmm. And the people in my group decided they want to go over there oh and stand for three hours and pay $20 to get a picture of these guys. And I told them, I said, they ain't even investigators. What the hell are you all doing? Yeah. Well, we like them. It's like, it's like watching a slow train wreck. And I'm like, <laughs> are you shitting me? Well, the thing that really gets are you kidding? yeah, the thing that gets me is you know with these shows, it's like, well, we're out here searching for Sasquatch, and it's like, uh, well, we didn't find him today, but uh, hopefully we'll find him tomorrow. Next episode, well, we didn't <laughs> find him, but we were really close. We did get some some strange noises and some activity, but we didn't find him. Next episode, well, you know what? If what's his name didn't get sick, I'm sure we probably would have found him, but we just didn't find him. It's the same thing as uh, our buddies, uh, the Tennessee Race Chasers in Ghost Asylum. Well, we didn't capture that ghost this time, but we did get a lot of evidence, you know. So maybe next time, well. You know, the trap, I think the trap worked, but maybe it didn't work. Maybe they they, they jumped ship on the way to Gallatin, Tennessee. I don't know. But we didn't, we, we did, we got some crazy evidence, but, we, you know, we didn't catch the ghost this time. Maybe next time. It's like every time at the end, yeah. they, they, they leave us for a disappointment that they didn't capture one. I'm like, if you catch one, what the hell are you going to do with it? You're going to put it in your yeah. your ghost containment unit? I mean, what, what the hell are you going to do with it? I mean, seriously. You gotta put it in a jar and put it in a train museum. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to. I had to bring it up. I had to bring it up. Oh God. I think up there in Charlottesville. I couldn't even. I couldn't even go over and, and shake their hand because I, I just kept thinking of that ghost containment box, and, and I kept laughing in my head, so I just walked away. Yeah, but uh, you know. They, they had a really cool show. I mean, they're they're investigating uh, principles and their methodology is really cool. Just the ideas yeah. of trapping a ghost just kind of threw me for a loop. 
And I became friends with Porter and I became friends with Doogie. And I'm like, you guys can't catch a ghost. You know that you know how stupid that sounds. Well, then it all of a sudden it changed to you know they're trying to uh, you know capture data and and see if they can talk to them. But well, I mean, there's no more capturing. There's no more trap. Well, I mean, some of their stuff once they changed it to catching data, some of their thinking out of the box stuff was kind of creative. Oh yeah, they especially, they really did get creative. Especially the one at the OSPH. I don't think I. They, oh, with the fire. Oh, that's a that's a limit in itself right there. That wow. was awesome. It was the uh, the music, the <laughs> amplifier, and the fire. That that was interesting. But then you know they moved on, and now they're doing haunted towns, which is really cool. I enjoy that show. Um, we're actually looking to yeah. investigate Old South Pittsburgh Hospital with, with the whole crew. Mm -hmm. They're going to be joining us, which is going to be kind of cool. Uh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. We just got to figure out well, well, when. <laughs> well, since so, so how we're running out of time here, and I appreciate y'all coming on the show, you know, what, what's y'all's plans for the rest of 2017? And, you know, do you have any other projects other than your show coming on? on October 31st on well, Amazon and you know uh, what, what else y'all gonna be working on that you can discuss well we're still working on season two and we're finishing taping it out uh, we're going to the crime and punishment museum this month uh, this month on the, 21st. Uh, on the 21st we're gonna be going to a convention uh, re and it's our red carpet release and it's gonna be at the haunted bourbon in New Orleans mm-hmm and anybody who buys the tickets and mentions our names during the process gets to have the VIP section. And they've got a little theater set up to where our very first episode is going to be put, put on a big screen. Yep. And you get to see the very first episode into a theater, big screen, and everything. And that's in New Orleans, and that's going to be the 27th, 28th, and 29th of uh, October. It's a pre-release, and of course, the rest of the shows go release out on Amazon on the 31st. Um, we're going to be going to Hinsdale, New York in November. I get to spend my birthday weekend investigating. Demon House. I house. did that last year. I had a birthday weekend. We was investigating uh, a battlefield last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, cool. uh, then in uh, December, we're going to be doing uh, Ra uh, Randolph County as uh, Asylum. Asylum. And... Uh, I don't know much more past that. I don't think we have anything scheduled in January yet. And, uh, oh yeah, we're doing a Paranormal Ghostology October the 26th in, in uh, Baduca, Kentucky at the McCracken County Library. Uh, our no local news channel is going to come out and film us and put it on their access channel for anybody who can't make it that night. They can watch it on the channel too on a later date. Uh, we've got several projects going on in February. Uh, we have, of course, the film project going on with Lucy. And uh, that was a five-year research project that finally made it to where it's... We're hopefully going to get to film in a couple of months. Yeah. And uh, we've got several locations lined up next year. Going to visit some couple of old locations next year. Uh and of course, if you haven't heard, in June 23rd, 2018, what's going to happen, Gavin? I have no idea what's going to happen. Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, tying the knot. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with everybody I know getting married? But you know, it's a new thing now just to live together. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, if you but do that, seven years, it's uh, common law. You're married. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're going to be getting married on the 23rd. But uh, as she mentioned, next year for season three, we are planning to hit a lot of jails, prisons, hospitals, schools, uh, some bed and breakfast locations. So we're hoping that season three, Actually, we're still going to be adding more to uh, season two. I mean, season one only left with four because we had some issues with server issues due to the hurricane. So we lost a lot of stuff. So we had to like basically go back and start doing uh, interviews and stuff. I mean, we we have the investigations and everything all lined up, and we got you know our evidence, but we don't have our interviews and we don't have B-roll because well it's gone. 
So we have to go back to a bunch of locations to get that back. And then of course we'll start rolling those out. But um, we're planning on trying to have at least 12 episodes for season two and possibly 12 for season three. So it, it we'll find out. I believe next year we're not gonna do that many um, events. We may do a few. I mean, we do have the, uh, the Dead of Winter Festival by uh, Troy Taylor in uh, February of next year at the Mineral Springs Hotel. So we'll be doing that. And then in May, we are going to be going to the Edinburgh Manor for the Supercon 2018. But I don't know of any other events that are gonna be going on that year. Um, Plus also, we don't know about Silicon since the location that they usually have it at is up for sale and we're not yeah. too and possibly has been sold so we don't know what the future of silicon is going to be for next year yeah rural king for some weird reason wants to buy the cross-country mall where silicon was i don't know why hmm. redneck walmart it wants to buy a mall well do y'all have a website people go to or if they have any questions or thoughts or comments how they can get in touch with you well, right now, since, like I stated earlier, with the, the website going to hell um, due to the, the hurricanes, they got us on a temporary server, and we still haven't been put back up, but it's www.gavincountry.wix, which is W-I-X, dot uh, I-T-S-G, wait, is that right? In, it's in the shadows group. Uh... So basically just take the first letter of each uh, word and add that on there. You can go to the website. Originally it was phantasmaghosthunters.com, but it's gone. So waiting on them to get a whole new DNS for us so we can actually pull that up. But anyway, we do have Facebook pages. We have YouTube pages. Uh, we're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Uh, we're everywhere. <laughs> you just go to Google, type in Phantasmic Ghost Hunters. Uh, or type in Paranormal Journey to the Unknown. I mean, you can go to Amazon right now, Amazon.com, and type in the Paranormal Journey to the Unknown. It'll take you to the launch page where you actually see uh, the first two episodes there. The next two are uh, basically on their way, uh, but everything will be ready to go by October 31st. But, you know, you can actually go there, check out the, uh, the banner and all that stuff. Okay, cool. Well, Gavin and Paula, I, I appreciate you two coming on the show. I mean, it, it's been a great interview, and I'm sorry about the, uh, the screw up there with the audio, but uh, uh, you, I have no respect for what y'all doing. I mean, y'all doing a great job, and uh, Thank I, you. I'd like to have y'all back on sometime next year if y'all be interested. <laughs> if, yeah. I don't, if, I, if it's a better show. <laughs> yeah, I mean we can we can no do that. Um, I mean because our studio is in house, so <laughs> we don't have very far to go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Mine's in my house too. I'm sitting here in a pair of thongs with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Are you eating Cheetos too? I don't think he's Ron. I don't think too with 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 my feet. <laughs> okay, he's not Ron White. That's only if he was sitting in a beanbag chair eating Cheetos. Watching an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, man! You too. I appreciate appreciate y'all so much, and I'll let y'all go. And thank you for your time, and and uh, you know you all have a good night, and y'all keep it strong out there, and don't get don't get in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> trouble? No. <laughs> all right, man. We appreciate it being on your show, and uh, you know we're we're honored to be on your show. Thanks for having us. And yes, I enjoyed oh, thank having you. Night. Like I said, it, my door is always open. Just just give me a holler, and we'll work something out again for next year when y'all want to come back on, and we'll we'll shoot the shit again. All right, sounds like a winner. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, y'all too. Have a good night. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Well. That Good night, folks. If you're not...